It wasn't long ago that e-bikes were thought of as their own distinct category, separate from a standard, non-powered road, mountain or gravel bike. But since their stratospheric boom in popularity and their entry into nearly every bike genre out there, it makes about as much sense to refer to e-bikes as one homogenous whole as it does to talk about those with round wheels. With that in mind, we've picked out seven eye-catching e-bikes from right across the spectrum. From folding to hybrid to road and to gravel, the one thing that ties them all together is their excellent value. So let's jump in. Our first pick is Cyclotricity's Wallet Folding Electric Bikes for its combination of small pack size, relatively low weight at 16.9kg and its £799 price tag. Now, there will be a theme here, we haven't gone for the absolute cheapest model we could find. Dueling Ridge Polar Folding Electric Bicycles are available for less, or any number of other interestingly named models from Amazon or AliExpress. But, balancing price against value, there is a certain level of performance worth hitting. So, back to the Cyclotricity wallet. Unlike many e-bikes around this price point, and even some more expensive, this folding bike does actually fold to a degree that makes it functional for use on public transport. With the motor in the front hub and its lithium-ion battery discreetly hidden inside the frame, it looks impressively sleek for an e-bike at this price point. Packing 288 watt hours, Cyclotricity claims the bike's good for between 20 and 30 miles or 30 and 50 kilometers, and only takes 4 hours to charge. The wheel size is 18 inches, striking a good balance between folding size and riding comfort. A 20 inch would provide better rollover for rougher roads and cobbled sections, while a 16 inch helps to pack away smaller, but then each of those have their own downsides. Coming equipped with a pannier rack and mud guards, you're getting quite a lot for your money. Almost the polar opposite of a folding bike, Pure's Flux electric hybrid bike promises ultimate simplicity, which, in our experience, is a pretty reliable proxy for durability. Set up as a single speed, there's no derailleur, gear cable or shifter to go wrong, while a Gates carbon belt takes the place of a conventional chain and doesn't need oiling, degreasing or really much maintenance at all. With a 55 by 22 tooth gear, that means your legs will be spinning at about 80 RPM once you hit 25 km per hour. Not too slow nor too fast. As it is an e-bike, there's no need to worry about the heels, the rear wheel motor will keep you ticking along at a steady speed regardless. Weighing in at just 17.5 kilos is quite light for an e-bike, although that does come at the sacrifice of a little range. Packing just 252 watt hours, the battery is on the small side and only offers up to 25 miles or 40 kilometers of range. Unfortunately, the ethos of simplicity does extend to the production. There is only one size available and the suggested size range is quite small at 5 foot 7 to 6 foot 2, or 170 to 188 centimeters. Carrera's Impel IM1 e hybrid bike comes in £100 more expensive than the Pure Flux 1, but offers a few key differences. Most significant amongst these has got to be the sizing range. There's still only two frame models, but they cover a range from 5'1 to 6'3, greatly increasing the range of people for whom this bike could be an option. Despite the battery being slickly integrated into the frame, it still packs quite a bit more capacity than the Flux 1. At 367 watt hours, Carrera reckons this bike is good for up to 50 miles or 80 kilometers on a single charge. However, there are some limitations. Rim brakes might be a little easier to work on, but they simply aren't as good as disc brakes when it comes to riding in the wet and braking control. The Impel IM1 also uses a chain instead of carbon drive, which again is a simpler system but does require a bit more care and attention when it comes to cleaning. Finally, at 19.2 kilos, the weight is a bit greater than that of the Flux 1. Of course, not an issue when riding, but when it comes to stairs and storage, those extra kilos do count. The EasyGo Commute EX Special Edition may not be the first name that springs to mind when you think of e-hybrid or urban bikes, but it does have a lot to offer. At £1,199, it's a little more expensive again, but considering the equipment it comes with, we think it pays for itself. Starting with the electrics, a generous battery size of 400 watt hours gives you the option to use the assist more heavily or simply ride further on a single charge. 
It also has a walk assist mode, helping to mitigate some of its 19 kilo weight should you need to wheel it up a steep hill. Front and rear lights run off that one battery, plus mud guards and a pannier rack included as standard mean that you're getting much more than just the bike on its own. The single chainring paired to an 8 speaker set might not sound like a broad range of gears, but with the assistance from the rear hub motor, small gears aren't so necessary on the climbs. When it comes to the world of e-cargo bikes, the sky really is the limit in terms of price. You can get models which cost as much as a small van, although of course, much better for the environment, traffic congestion and being cheaper to maintain. That said, it is possible to pick up a cargo e-bike for much less than that. The Babo Big E features a stable design with two wheels at the front and one at the rear, which makes for easy loading. With seat belts and benches, it can be fully used to replace a car for the school run or ferrying the kids to their after-school clubs. To maximise its use for inanimate cargo, the little benches simply fold away, leaving a cavernous space for the week shopping or whatever else you may need to carry. Another nice feature is the parking brake that helps keep the bike steady when loading and unloading. Its steering damper also helps to keep the bike tracking true and minimises the effects of any bumps in the road. For low light conditions, the Babo Big E comes with LED lights which are powered off of the main battery, so you only have to worry about charging one thing. There's also the option of a rain tent cover to help keep the little ones nice and dry. With a 450 watt hour battery, it's rated as good for 30 to 45 miles, although this is highly dependent on the weight, hills and starting and stopping. Here, we take quite a step up in price as we turn to e-road bikes. More specifically, that new breed of e-road bikes which more closely matches the aesthetic and weight of a standard road bike. They offer that little extra boost which can serve to expanding your cycling horizons, or help you keep up with that friend who seems to have little else to do other than train. Starting at £2,399, it's undoubtedly an investment, but compared to those bikes offering a similar package such as the Merida e Sculptura or the Cannondale Super 6 Evo Neo, Ribbles Endurance ALE does represent something of a steal. This is the aluminium model, but even so, with a weight of 13 kilos, it's not a heavy beast to lug around. You can happily tick along the flat and along gentle climbs with the motor providing the extra power when the gradient starts to bite. The internal battery can charge in just three and a half hours and Ribble says it will provide around 60 miles of assistance. Should you want to go further, you can get a battery extender that doubles the range to 456 watt hours, elegantly taking the place of a bottle inside the main triangle. We think these bikes offer so much. To quote the racing legend Greg LeMond, it doesn't get any easier, you just go faster. Although, you can take it easy on an e-bike, you can also ride hard if you choose to. You'll just get a lot further for the effort. Gravel bikes tend to come at a bit of a premium over road bikes, and it's no different when it comes to e-gravel bikes. At around £3,000, Ken Cycle's e-adventure is certainly not cheap, but it is still at the low end of what you can expect to pay for a fully built e-gravel bike. Even in the context of non-electric gravel bikes, some brands have models priced at this level which have lower spec components than what Ken has managed to equip its e-gravel bike with. The profile of the e-adventure is unquestionably a little bulkier than that of a slick e-road bike, but then it does pack a lot of battery capacity. Cairn claims it can tick off 45 miles on the middle power setting and can go up to 90 miles on the very lowest setting. Unlike some other e-gravel bikes which come with much narrower tyres, typically around 42mm, the e-adventure has gone all in with the chunky rubber, specking 2.25 650B Vittoria rubber. When it comes to e-gravel bikes, the heavier weight and the higher speeds means cushioning takes a whole new level of importance. Those tyres might seem a little excessive at first glance, but you do have the motor to help carry the bike along, and riding is simply so much more fun with the grip and comfort of wider tyres. We might complain a little about Shimano GRX1 by not quite having enough range for gravel riding, but for e-gravel riding, it makes a pretty perfect match. The shifting is so fast and accurate, it really complements use with the greater torque coming from the mid-drive motor. And naturally, with an extra 250 watts at your disposal, you won't be wishing for a smaller gear on the climbs. So there we have it, those are our 7 budget e-bikes from across the spectrum. If you think we missed any out, drop a comment below. If you enjoyed the video, drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and we'll see you again soon.